Hey everyone, it's James from the Fit RV coming to you from Van Village at Winnebago's 2017 Grand National Rally. So you may know that we recently replaced the suspension system on our RV Lance with VB air suspension. And right after we did it, Paul Steph and I thought, hey, this feels pretty good. But was that just wishful thinking on our part because we had laid out the cash for the suspension? Or was it real? So I kind of had to know, so I've devised an experiment to find out. Since we are here where there are about 50 similar rigs, I found these unsuspecting victims, Michael and Rivka Sullaway. How you guys doing? Great. Great. Okay. Now, we have a Travato. You guys have a Travato. Mm -hmm. We have the 59G floor plan. 59G floor plan. All right. So our water tanks are in the same spot, our gray tanks, black tanks, all in the same spot. We've got a bike rack. We got a bike rack. All right. And beyond that, it's about as close as I'm going to get to a to a side by side comparison because Lance is pretty unique. But we're just going to go with it. So now all we need to do is get out of here, and I'll tell you how we're going to run this experiment. So let's pack up and leave the rally ground. Sure. Works let's for go. Us. Okay. Okay, guys. Here's how this is going to work. We've got an app on my phone that records vibration data, kind of like a seismometer. And so, Michael, I've mounted this with a suction cup mount firmly to your kitchen cabinet, to your kitchen countertop. And when I tell you to, on a certain landmark, when I pass it, you're going to hit, you're going to start taking the data. Okay. Okay. Rivka, yeah. you are sitting here in the passenger seat. You are, you didn't spend any money on fancy air suspension, did you? Oh, no. Are you being compensated in any way for your participation in this test? Uh, I am. I am compensated by the amazing company. <laughs> if you mean us, <laughs> then uh, you, you're easily amazed. Um, so you are going to be a subjective at a point. So you're sure. going to ride and you're just going to feel this kind of bumpy road. And it's pretty bumpy. We rode on it this morning on bikes. It's kind of bumpy. So you're going to ride and then you're just going to kind of at the end of it, you're going to say, okay, that felt like this. And then we'll do it in our van with the air suspension. Sure. And you'll, you'll do that. You'll repeat this in our van. All right, everybody ready? Everybody know their jobs? We Absolutely. Are. All right, let's go. Let's do it, man. All right, let's go. We're rolling. I'm gonna get to 30 miles an hour. And Michael, go ahead and press go. All right, All right so we get these big ba-bam, ba-bam kind of bumps. Is it picking them up back there? It is, it's showing up well. Awesome. Okay. Trying to keep a constant, oh, we got a big dip there. That probably yeah. picked up. Now this is this van is loaded as you guys would normally load it for a trip, obviously because you're on a trip, right? So right, everything. You haven't tried to add ballast or anything like that, right? No. Bananas and corn hanging. We're 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 it. You're the real deal. Yeah. All right, we've got some uh, stop sign warning ripples coming up here at the end, so we'll hit those and then that'll sort of be the end of this segment. I am sure feeling those up here. There's one set, two sets, and here's the third one. Okay. All right, you go ahead and stop it, Michael. Yep. All right. You know, it's like you're going over a bridge where there's sort of belts and you, oops, oops. Yep. Like that, that's what the road feels like. All right, test cool. number one complete. Cool, yeah, it worked really well. Right on. Okay, we've taken the first run in the stock van. Um, remember how that felt in your head because I'm going to ask you later. So everybody's in the same position. We're uh, going to run the same set of road at the same speed. You know, sample, you know. All right, yeah, everybody right. knows their job. Sure. Let's get to it. All right, there we go.
Hey, Michael, while you're up back there, you want to get me a soda? <laughs> Yeah, to us it didn't feel when we when we initially did it. Not to, I don't want to color your experience, no, 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 no. I, but uh, when we initially did it, we thought it was less harsh. You can still tell there are bumps. You yes. still feel them, but they weren't as sharp. No, they were more not. Not. softer, rounded. They are. It's, it's like a wave, point. like it, it is. A tendency to sound the voice when sound when oops we go over something yeah uh, that doesn't work here really it's it's fine it's right. a wave it, it's not as sharp as it was before all right now those are those stop sign ripples that was right. first set right second set and you can go ahead and stop the data michael and we are done. All right. Okay, guys, so we've done the same stretch of road and similar rigs with you in the right. same positions. So I guess the main question, Rivka, is for you. What did you think of the ride quality? Okay, so when we were riding in our car, uh, the bumps were definite bumps. It's like you go over a bridge and there's a belt, and I even jump a little bit on my seat. When we were, when we were riding in your car, the bumps were there, however, they were smoother. It was like a, riding a wave rather than a peak. Okay. So that was mainly So it just smoothed out the ride, more or less. Right, it was softer, okay. no question. And now, Michael, you were kind of watching yeah. the data. What did you see, if anything? I, I have to say, watching the, 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 the peaks, mm -hmm. it, it looked pretty similar to me. I didn't see any immediate difference. It felt, standing there, to me, a little bit softer on the top of the peaks, but not substantially. Interesting. Right. Well, I guess I've got some analysis to do with the data. Um, we will uh, do that and put that in at the end of the video. But in the meantime, this is James with Michael and Rivka, and we will see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay, so as promised, I'm back, and I've got data. Now, Michael was right. This actually did turn out to be fairly interesting. And I've had about two weeks to look at this and play with it, but I'm going to try to get through it in just a few minutes with you guys. So I'm going to go kind of fast. So the first thing, the reason why this data was interesting is because if you just took the data and did some very basic, like an average or a variance or a standard deviation, like a single number measure, it was very, very similar. So I could see why Michael said, oh, it's pretty close. So here's what I did. Uh, the first thing I did is, I, if you look here at the uh, spreadsheet, I standardized the time. I realized I drove about four seconds faster in my own van than I did in Michael's, So, but I wanted to represent them on the same scale of an axis. So what I did is I just made the start zero and the end one, and I scaled all the values in between. Didn't change the Y values. Anyway, um, the other thing is, I don't know if you noticed, but the phone wasn't perfectly oriented X, Y, and Z axes. So I basically took a vector sum of the data. Uh, but that gave me like a whole bunch of digits, and I know the iPhone is not precise to nine significant digits of acceleration. So I rounded it down to three, and then I subtracted the 1G that every single one of us is used to feeling all day, every day. And that's what we have here in columns D and in column K. So what you can start to notice here is that if you look at the max, this was pretty interesting, the maximum value in the van with the stock suspension is 1.358. That's, that's kind of like a kick in the pants. That's an up. So one and a third, a little over that, Gs in the stock suspension. The worst it ever got in the van with the VB air suspension is 1.15. That is actually, and I've got notes, it's 15% less. So cool. Uh, the same thing happened on the negative side, which would be like the, the roller coaster drop feeling, but it wasn't as dramatic. Uh, if you look at the peak to peak, like what's the worst positive and negative acceleration and how wide is that range? Here in the van with uh, stock suspension, we get uh, 2.091, so over 2 Gs of variance you can feel up or down. And in our van with the VB air suspension, again, that's 11% less at 1.8. So what I know you guys all really want to see, oh wait, there's one more thing. Um, 
I just did a simple count of all the data points in the data set that were greater than a half a G and with the stock suspension. We got 93 of them and in our van with uh, the VB air suspension, there were 74. So the graph is what you all really want to see. So I won't keep in suspense any longer. Here's the graph. That is the graph of the unfiltered data with the stock suspension. And it's, I would call this hairy. <laughs> I don't really know other, other way to describe it. It's pretty, it looks like a EKG of a heart attack kind of a thing. Um, and then if we look at the same graph for Lance with the VB air suspension, we still have definitely a number of peaks, but we can see that things are much more clustered around the zero perturbation kind of uh, axis. So, but if we look at this, we can definitely see the events, like the expansion joints, the ba-bam, ba-bam, ba-bam. We see that. And so if we just look at the number of peaks here we have that are greater than a half a G or greater than negative half G, absolute value. Uh, in this van with stock suspension, there are 42 of them. And if we look at the one for Lance with VB air suspension, there are only 35. So we're definitely feeling something. I look at this, and this is what I think of as, as harshness. And I look at this, and this looks like we're starting to do something about it. Another interesting thing here is you can see an event. So there's this right here, if you follow the cursor, there's a definite wah wah. And I think you can see that on the video. And then there's another one shortly after it. And we have those same events in Lance, except here you just there's one drop and then there's the second event there. Interesting, keep those in mind because we'll see those again later. So the harshness that we feel here isn't a surprise to me because I've got some footage. I actually looked at the suspension on the stock van and it was riding on the bump stops. So there may be shock absorbers and whatnot back there, but if the springs are fully loaded and we're riding on the bump stops, you're not getting the benefit of any of that and the result is a pretty harsh ride. So then I thought, well, wait a minute. I'm sampling the data at hundredth of a second intervals. Nobody feels anything at a hundredth of a second is an impact. You're gonna feel that, I mean, a hundred hertz is like, mm, it's like G. So you're not gonna feel that as an impact. You're gonna feel that as a vibration. I didn't really wanna measure vibrations. I wanted to measure the, the pounding of the ride. So what I wanted to do and I'm not an expert in digital signal processing. I'm sure someone will be watching this who is. What I want to do is to filter out that, that buzz and still leave the peaks. And so if I'm remembering correctly, a simple moving average filter will uh, you know, suppress the high frequency noise, but still leave a sharp step response where you have an event. And the other good thing about a moving average filter is it's really easy to do in Excel. Um, so I did that. I filtered out the data and I played with it and what I found was that uh, 10 data points really was going to kind of give me what I was most looking for. So I did that for uh, the Soloway van with the stock suspension. And that looks like this when I filtered out. You can still see the events, but this graph to me, largely, looks like a toned down version of its former self. I did the same thing in our van with the VB air suspension. And now, to me, this really looks like we're starting to keep things suppressed in the plus minus a tenth of a G kind of range. So, aces there. Um, other things to notice here, if we look at uh, this one, like this is that event, and you notice here we go up, down, up, down, up, down. And then the same thing here for the second event, up, down, up, down. But if we look at it with the VB air suspension, we just get kind of one hit and then the shock absorbers, which can work in a van that's not fully riding on its bump stops, take effect and it mutes that out. Same thing with the second one. We get one kind of and then we're back within our tenth of a G buffer zone. Um, let's see. Some other uh, four examples. If we look at, uh, let's see, we look at the Soloway graph, the stock suspension, and we still have points here that have a peak of greater than a half a G. And if we look at uh, VB air suspension, we don't get any events that are more than 0.4 of a G. Now, this is filtered data, but still. Um, if we look at the Soloway graph with the stock suspension, we count the peaks that are over two tenths of a G. So I've got like a tighter threshold for what I'm calling an event now. We've still got, I wrote it down, 20 distinct peaks where this data is over two tenths of a G. And if we look at the values for the VB air suspension, there are only 14. 
Uh, same thing on the negative side. We have only two that are even above uh, negative a tenth of a G here. And if we look here, we have, well, we have more. So there we go. Um, besides that, you know, I mean, come on. It just, it just looks smoother. So there you have it. That's where I wound up with the data. I'll put these graphs up on our website, thefitrv.com. You can have a look at them. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you're the aforementioned expert in digital signal processing, you can tell me if there's a better filter I should have used. Um, but other than that, that's kind of what, let me know what you think, but this is what I came up with. And so from where I'm sitting, which is in, not, not in this driver's seat, but in this driver's seat, I think I've satisfied myself that the VB air suspension has definitely smoothed out the ride in our ProMaster based RV. So that's going to do it for now. This is James from the Fit RV. We'll see you later. Bye.